everybody here today. Before we get started, I'm just wondering how many people here work in the elementary school? Okay. Um, middle school and high school. Okay. Or others, because I believe almost everybody there. All right, good. Um, I hope everybody took some pictures while you were waiting. If not, that's okay. You can look at some of your um, other pictures that you have on your phones later on. I'm going to start out today by going over some tips um, to take better um, photographs, and then later we're going to come back and look at those photographs you took and see if you can retake them and make them a little bit better. This is my wiki. This is kind of like the hub of everything I'm going to be going through today. Um, it has on um, the wiki homepage, it has the Prezi that I'm going to do. As you scroll down, it has a link to the light binder. Um, and it also has, I have a Deagle group set up, so later on when you have some time to share and talk, if you have some really good resources that you would like to share for photography, or if you find some, you can add them to this Deagle group, and it's open, it's called Photography in the Elementary Classroom. Um, how many people here have a Deagle account? Anybody? Okay, good. It's a social bookmarking site, if you're not sure what that is. Um, also here I have a couple of how-to videos. I'm not going to show those to you, but I did them a few years ago. Um, I did them for art snacks, and they're just like how to use the rule of thirds, and I think the other one is to get close, but I'm not positive on the subject. Um, so you can go to those and look at those. There's also the live binder is also embedded right in here, um, and I have some a couple other things that I'm going to come back to later. So right now, I'm going to move over to the Prezi. Okay, 
So, photography in the classroom. All right. I try to use photography as often as I can. Um, you know, a lot of times I end up taking the pictures, but one of the new things that I'm trying to do is get the kids to use the camera more. And now that I finally have, I just have one iPad, I teach reading to kids <coughs> read. Um, so I try to get them to start taking more pictures, and it's a lot easier with the iPad. And so we're going to go through some tips for better photos and some ideas. But first, I just wanted to show, share with you a few things about myself. <coughs> I, uh, I am a reading teacher. I teach kindergarten through third grade. The kids get pulled out and come to me. And this is one instance where the uh, kids were using the um, iPad. And they were taking pictures of words that they built with like little letter block type things. And this little boy got done early, so he didn't know what to do. So I also had pictures of our playground. I had pictures of the kids working around the room. I have probably the only picture of me actually teaching. And um, I also ended up with pictures of his mouth wide open and a nice close-up shot of his eye. Um, so it really made me laugh that night when I sat down and went through all the pictures. And it also made me realize, well, I guess I'm excuse me, I need to make sure that they know what to do when they're uh, done with their, their assignment. And I'm married, this is my husband Dwayne, and um, he likes old cars, he likes weird facial hair, and we both love photography. And we have two children, um, Otto and Kira, and they don't usually dress like this, but I realized when I went to put this together, I really don't have very many pictures of them, and it's kind of surprising since I'm taking pictures all the time. Uh, but they were on their way to a country concert that night, the big country music fans. And my passion is photography, um, macro photography in particular. I love to do and things in nature, and um, a lot of times I like to take pictures of things that are dead um, and find their beauty in them, even though they're past their prime. And this is another picture of me. And this was taken by Kimberly Wright. And Kimberly is the reason that I'm here. Mm -hmm. I met her at ISTE a couple of years ago, the last two years. Um, when I went to ISTE, she was there. And she just kept pestering me. You've got to come to Pasta. You've got to come to Pasta. You've got to present. You've got to be there. You take great pictures. You've got to come. So finally, I said, OK, I'm going to come. So I'm here. And, and Kimberly not. is not here. <laughs> <laughs> But it's because of her that I decided to come to Potsdam, and I'm so glad that I did. I think it's just a wonderful experience. And I should also mention that I teach in a rural district in upstate New York, central New York. So if you put your finger pretty much like right in the middle of New York State, that's where I live. Okay. So we're going to start out with some tips for taking better photos. And I'm going to go over four different tips with you today. Okay. And these are the four that I'll go over. So we're going to start with try different points of view. And you will notice that a lot of my pictures aren't from the classroom because I don't have permission from all of my kids to use their pictures. So I decided a lot of times it was just easier to use some of my nature photos. So getting a different point of view, um, a lot of times I see people, they just stand and take pictures this way. Okay? Once in a while they'll look down, but they don't really move. So you need to get down, and this one works really good in the classroom, is to get down at their level. Okay, sit down on the chair, get down on the floor, wherever they are, get at their level and take that picture. And another one is to get low and look up. This was at a butterfly a conservatory in Arizona last spring. I got there at a perfect time. It was when they first opened up. They really weren't, weren't moving very much. And this butterfly, I think it's called a Julia. And trust me, I have lots of pictures where I took looking down at it. I even had some on level. And then I got down lower and looked up, and this ended up being one of my favorite pictures um, of, the, of the day. Because you've got that nice light coming through the wings, you've got the shadow there. And another thing you want to look at when you're taking pictures is you can see the eye. You want the eye in focus. Okay, that's really important, especially when you're getting up close on things like that. Kind of makes the picture pop. It's kind of hard to see on that screen. Um, and this is just another point of view. You don't always have to have the whole body in, okay? You can just show parts, to show the action. I do some volunteer photography for Habitat for Humanity. Um, so this is just a shot I took of a bunch of college students as they were working on one of the houses. 
And the next one was to get in close. And this one works out really well in the classroom if you don't have permission to use their pictures on the internet and you want to post them. Just get in close. If you're just showing their hands, something like this, you can post that because there's really no uh, identifying features there. And if the kids are taking them, you can tell them too. You know, get in close, show me the work, show me what you want me to see. And just another one where I kind of crop out the little girl there. Okay. But this activity, it actually took up our whole sidewalk outside where the kindergartners were practicing their popcorn words. Um, but I just got in close to kind of show the main thing that they're, they're working on there. And just another one getting in close. Um, these I also took with my zoom lens. I wasn't like really with my camera right up that close to their hands. And I don't know, can you see the red lines on there? Mm -hmm. okay. Hopefully you can. But this one is the rule of thirds. We've got lines dividing the picture up vertically and horizontally. So when you're taking a picture, if it's a landscape picture like this, you want the horizon line to either be at the top third or running along the bottom third of the picture, not right smack dab through the middle. And this is one that I've really had to work on. I'm sure up until like two years ago, 99% of the pictures I took, everything was smack dab in the center. Okay? But it makes for a more interesting composition if you use the rule of thirds. That's one example. And here's another one where the tree line here kind of runs through the middle, but it's counterbalanced by the big tree here running down the third of the frame here. This also has another feature called the leading line. The guardrail here kind of captures your eye here. It will lead the viewer's eye through the picture. So if you're outside taking pictures, I don't think that's going to work so good in the classroom. But if you're outside taking pictures, you can look for those leading lines. And the last one, this was a cropped picture. Um, so when I cropped it, I made sure that my main subject was right here where the lines intersect. Those are kind of called your sweet, uh, sweet spots. So you can get your main subject in any one of those um, sweet spots that helps the composition of your picture. And the last one is just to watch your background. This is one I need to learn more about is if there's windows. When I do the Habitat for Humanity, when they do their dedication ceremonies, they always stay in front of the open windows and there's nothing on them because the family isn't there yet, uh, living in there yet. So I always got that reflection. It's hard to get the picture good. Um, so that time I tried sitting off more to the side. And you want to watch things like the lights up there. They're really close to his head. So if you can, try not to get those. Um, I know I take a lot of pictures where I probably have not watched the background, but then I don't keep those shots. So I had a hard time <laughs> finding pictures that fit this category. So I was on Facebook one day. And this is one that Ginger Lumen posted. So I sent her a message right away, said, can I use this picture? And she laughed and she said, sure, she knew exactly why I was going to use it, because you want to watch um, the little things feel like the straw going into the person's <laughs> head. <laughs> so what I'm going to have you do now is to take out your cameras, um, phones, whatever, look at your pictures and notice, did you use a rule of thirds? Did you use a different angle? Um, those types of things, and then, and you can share with the people around you, let them know, yes, you did, no, you didn't, and then I want you to take one more of these pictures, try one from a different point of view, try one where you're getting in close, try one where you're looking, thinking about the rule of thirds, watching your background, so I'm going to give you like five minutes or so just to play around, share, talk. And I'm hoping by just doing that, that that'll kind of start to put those um, ideas, tips into your head. How'd you do on yours? Very well. Yep. Yeah. And they tend to do the same thing. I really find to make myself conscious of getting the camera over. And if I'm in a hurry, I still go right back there. Try some more. <laughs>
visual reminder when I'm taking pictures to not forget about that rule of thirds. So if you're on your camera, you might want to look at the settings. That might be something that you have too. Okay, now on to some ideas for the classroom. Okay. So for this part, I'm actually going to leave the Prezi and we are going to go to a, the live binder. So I put together a live binder here. Um, when I do my live binders, I try to keep them fairly simple. Okay, when I go to a live binder and I open it up and there's lots and lots of tabs, and I open up a tab and there's like 50 tabs or whatever, I just find that really overwhelming. It's too much to look at. So I try to keep mine fairly simple here. This is just the opening slide. Um, and I promise, I'm just going to show you a few few that I really want you to take a look at. I'm not going to go through all of them. The first one are photography links, and there's just three links here um, for some different tips. And they're all geared toward um, children and photography. Okay? So those are just three resources that you can look at. The next one is the classroom ideas. Okay? How can we use photography in the classroom? And the first one, this was called Snow in Six Words. I think we'll look here in just a second. Um, and this was started by Martha Thorn, I think it's Thornburg, Thornburg, and um, the state of Washington. And this was done probably like four years ago. And she did it with her PLN. And she said, I want everybody to upload a picture. It was in a Google Doc, a picture of snow, and write six words about it. And so all kinds of people did. And it turned out really nice, and I thought, well, I can do that in the classroom, okay? At the time, I was teaching in a computer lab, and I only saw the kids once every six days for 40 minutes. So I did not have time to take them out to get the pictures of snow. So I went to Flickr, found pictures that I could use, put them on the server, and the kids picked their own pictures. And then we did all kinds of other things that they had to learn in the computer lab. But I think if you have a regular classroom, that's something that they could do, and you could pick anything and do something like that that one. This one is photo prompts. And later on, I'm going to give you some time to share and to work. Um, and this might be one that you might want to come back and take a look at. And these are more geared, a lot of them are for the upper grades, um, but it's something that you could look at and make up some for the younger grades as well. And they're photographs, and then people have put a variety of uh, prompts on there. Okay, so I'm not going to go to the site right now, but you can do that. And it's a really, I mean, the pictures are all really high quality. They've got a real, lot of good ideas there, getting the kids to think and to respond to them. And the next one, uh, voice thread in Animoto. I'm going to go back over to my wiki to show you these two. Is everybody familiar with Animoto and VoiceThread? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see if that works. Okay. So this is when the little boy was taking the picture of the words and kind of this VoiceThread. That's um, what they were doing it with. So they took the pictures on the iPad and there's an app for the VoiceThread on the iPad, which is really nice. So I was able to upload the pictures um, from the iPad into the VoiceThread 
and then the kids were able to look at it, and they were able to see the word, and then they had to spell the word and use it in a sentence. And with the app, they could also just write right on the screen with their finger. So if I just show this to you just real quick if it works here. <coughs> Here. But you can see where they're writing on it. And they could just scroll through it. They could pick which words they wanted to do. But it was a really good sort of review of the spelling words, real tactile for them to do. And they really enjoyed that. And they enjoyed listening to each other um, when they were done as well. And for the Animoto, um, Animoto, if um, on the voice or on the live binder, there's a link to Animoto and it goes to the educator page and you can get a free educator account because a regular free account, you only get like a 30 second video, but with an educator account, you get a much longer one. With this one, my kindergartners made words out of, or letters, excuse me, out of pipe cleaners and they took pictures of them and then we put them into the Animoto and you get to pick your music to go with it. Um, they can't record their voices with this one. But what I did was I would just show it to the whole class. The first time through, they just had to announce who did what letters. Then the second time through, we would just use it as a quick review of the letter names or the sounds, whichever I wanted to use it with. So, that turned back off. All right, so that's those two. And there's links to both of those on the live binder here. The next one is a make a book, and this one is really sad because I only have one here, right? and it's Pokemon. And this is, I brought my book along, I had one published through Pokemon, so I brought it along if you want to see the quality of it. And I know that there's a lot of other book sites out there, so when we get to the sharing part, I'm hoping that you'll share some of the sites that you've used, and then I will add these to the live binder later. All right. um, this is Jack. I got it from my mother-in-law last summer. She was cleaning out her house and she said, oh, you want this? And we were getting ready to pack up and she lives in Iowa and I was getting ready to go home. And I was like, yeah, I'll take him. I'll take him to my classroom. So he kind of became our class mascot this year and the kids loved him, okay? So this one I did, at the end of the year, the kids wrote their own version of Jack Comes to the Class to Reading and they picked up their own pictures. Um, they took the pictures, they scripted what they wanted to write how they wanted the picture set up. And again, we did it with the iPods, or iPad. And that one is also on here. I just haven't gotten the copy of it yet, okay? But that's just another way to use the photography is to make it into a book. And what's really nice with Pokemon, they also have an educator page. You get a 10% discount. And I can embed it, okay? So I have it on my wiki page, my class wiki page. Um, I can put it up on the smart board so we can read it that way as well. And go over to where to sh uh, share and find photos. These are three safe sites for kids to use, okay? Even the youngest kids, Art Snacks, um, if you haven't been there, that's Kevin Honeycutt's site, it's excellent. Um, I try to go, I don't use, it's black letter school, so I don't really use it at school, but I try to contribute to it by adding some of my photos to there. EduPix, um, you can't upload pictures, but EduPix has um, a lot of science pictures and diagrams that you can use, and they're all free to use, okay? And that's really big with me when I'm working with the kids, if they're gonna go out and get photos from somewhere, I wanna be teaching them how to be good digital citizens. Um, so this is one of the sites they can use. And Picks for Learning is the other one. And this one also, um, sometimes I don't use upload to this one as often because it's a little bit trickier. But if they're all pictures of people have uploaded, but Picks for Learning checks them all before they um, post them. And it also gives you a bibliography at the bottom of each pic picture already prior to just copy and paste. Okay. Nice. And um, you can also search here, which is really nice. Okay, they also have a list of topics that you can search for what you want as well. And Flickr is also a place to go and find and share pictures, but not as safe okay, for our younger kids. So I kind of gave that its own page. Plus, I have there's a lot of different um, sites for Flickr. So I gave you a Flickr guide, the Library of Congress, the White House. They all have their own pages, and you're free to use those pictures that are there. 
Um, and then the last two tabs are places where you can go and search um, by the Creative Commons licensee so that you're getting um, pictures that you can use. And let's see. Then there's a photocrats. Um, the apps, I have one, two, three, four that are apps that you can use in the classroom okay, for your iPads. There's a little story maker is one where you can go in and put in pictures and then the kids, you can make a little booklet out of it. Okay. Um, and then they can write and they can record. It's from Grasshopper apps and if you have younger children for second grade Grasshopper apps, I really like. And my story is very similar to that. You can upload pictures and add text. I have to admit, I have not actually used these apps yet with my students, but it's in my plans for next year. Okay, I just kind of, because I just got my um, iPad at the end of the school year. And Story Kit is another one where you can upload pictures. Okay. And then the other three here, Photo Express, Snapseed, um, those, or those two actually, are more where you can go in and do some editing of your photos. Okay. And I, I think all these are free, okay, but sometimes I get like get notices that this app is free for today, so I go and get it, so I can't guarantee that they're all free now. Um, but if it's not free, it's not on my iPad. And then just the link to the Animoto and Voice right here as well. Okay. And then I just have a few of my own tips if you want to become a better um, photographer. And one is just to read your camera's manual, pull that out, read it. <laughs> Little bits by little bits, maybe, but just start playing with it. Um, read what they're supposed to do, and then play with part of it. Come back, read a little bit more, play with that, just so you know how your camera works. Also, go to Flickr or another site called 500 Pics. But they have phenomenal pictures. Just for some inspiration, see what other people are doing. Um, join a photo a day group. They have a lot of those on Flickr. Um, I think that's one of the things that really helped my photography was just getting out there, taking a picture every single day. All right. One year, I think my second year into it, I've been doing it for four or five years now. My second year, I was like fanatical. It would be like 11 o'clock at night, and I'd be like, oh, I didn't take that picture. <laughs> so I'd be you know, looking up what the topic was for the day. I'd be setting something up in the house and taking a picture of it and getting it posted because I had to do it. I just had <coughs> this obsession this one year that I had to do it. Um, since then, I've kind of lost that obsession, <laughs> but um, I still like to do the picture a day type of thing. I now belong to a local photo club, and we have our own photo a day each month. We kind of work together and come up with our own topics. We still do it. And my daughter just started our local photo club like a month ago, and I'm already seeing an improvement in her photographs just from getting out there, taking that picture every day, giving it some thought. And there's a website called Create It Live. Okay, if you're really interested in photography, they offer free courses, like once or twice a month. You can um, sign up and they'll send you emails when the courses are coming along. And they do it live and then they'll play it over again over the weekend. You get a couple chances to watch it. And they're always, on, I think they're always on the weekends. Um, and those are really good too. So, and if you have a local photo club, join that and get involved with that. All right. I've got to go back here. Something is still playing. I can hear it. Okay. And And the last part is just I'm going to give you some time to share, okay? And um, I'm going to give you time to look at the live binder, okay? So you have time to check out those links, see what's there that's going to work for you. Um, I have a couple of other suggestions here. Back on this page, okay? Use this time to look at the links. Um, Share, I'm, I was kind of hoping we'd have a table, but you can just kind of move the 
chairs around so you can talk in small groups and talk about how you use photography. I'd really like to know how you're using it. Um, come up with some ideas for maybe next school year. You could go to that photo prompt site, take a look at those, see what they're doing, maybe come up with some of your own. Um, maybe set your own goals for a better photographer. And I have a couple of different ways here that you can share some things. I did a sticky board. And with the sticky board, you can go here. And if you have some ideas, especially like how you're using photography or ideas that you come up with today, you can just put them on one of those little sticky notes and stick it on the board and then we'll all be able to see those ideas. And if you have some suggestions <coughs> or other links that I should add to the live binder, like for the bookmaking one or any of those tabs, if you think, oh yeah, you should have this one on there, this is a really good site, I'd love to hear about it. So you can just fill out this Google form and send it to me. And then later on, I'll go in and add those to the live binder so that we'll have those. And I'll also add them to the um, Digo group as well. Or if you want to add your own links to Digo group, I have a link there for that as well. Okay. Any questions? Okay, so I've got that time to kind of play and we'll help you. <coughs> I can't wait to use all this for tomorrow's photo walk. Oh. <laughs> I should promote that too. We're having a photo walk tomorrow morning. Is it 7.15? Yes. 7.15 tomorrow morning we're doing a photo walk and another one from 7 to 9 tomorrow night if you're still around.
pictures from today's lesson and recorded. Very cool. And what do you do? Or that we can at least say. Sometimes you say you can't stay. Anytime I can get them reading.
I love Chef Bill. Thank everybody for coming. I well, hope that you, you got something beneficial. Yeah, I'm going to go through yeah. all the website stuff. All right, good. Thanks. And the last page was the About Me page, and um, that just has like links to my Flickr account, my blog, different places there. So. Thank you, Nindra. Awesome. Thank you. And she's going to be helping with the photo walk tomorrow morning. Yep. So, and tomorrow night. And tomorrow night, yes. What is the photo walk? I'm just not caught on. Okay, so the photo walk is going to be where we start, oh, sorry, where we start um, at Etc., which is just right here at 715. 
and um, you can go to the Google form and fill it out saying what kind of what um, medium you'd like to focus on. There's like a happiness is or basic concepts like letters or um, numbers. Um, and then we'll divide into groups. We'll get some great, some more great tips from this Nedra, and then we'll kind of go along as in a group and photograph in the downtown area. And it will end up back here before um, before opening. So they'll find that on the Podstock site. You can find it on the Podstock. There is information, I believe, on the Podstock 2012 site, and it's also on information on Facebook. And also, you can um, look on Twitter under Podstock Photo Walk. So. All right. Thank you. It should be fun. Well, that's we're going early. I was so yeah. early. Yeah. And that's what we're <laughs> going early. I was so early. And that's what we're going early. I was so early. And that's what we're going 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 early. And yeah, we have you played with this little story oh. maker at all? I played with it a little bit. What ha okay, because I've gotten to the end here. What's my drink? I just don't want to see it. Okay. I got to the end here. I'm just. And I almost made it through the day. It's like a half set or something. Oh, well, I'm not going to tell you there's only a certain number of pages. Well, there's, well, this is all that I've done. Well, then I can't even get back. But I like the idea. It's a very good idea. And then, uh, are you using a little movie maker? Yeah. Do you know how to, like, send the movie somewhere? Or No, I was just the first time oh, I've ever gotten one. Okay. So, have, have you done it before? 